Hi, kindergarten. Today, we will read again about the farmer who loads up his cart and goes into town to sell all the goods that he has made and grown that year. As, as we read, we are going to use the details that we learn to support our ideas about the text. Repeat after me. I will use the details in a text to support my ideas. Very good. Now, before we begin to read, we need to review some important vocabulary words. The first word is weave loom. That is a hand-operated machine used to weave fabrics. Let's put the thread on a weave loom to start making fabric. This is just my imaginary, my make-believe weave loom. The next word is birch broom. A birch broom is a handmade broom used for sweeping. Now I have made my own mini birch broom. Let's pretend to sweep the floor with our birch broom. The next word is shingles. Shingles is a piece of material laid in overlapping rows to cover roofs or sides of a house. Now, it has a beautiful pattern on this roof. Let's use our hands to pretend to touch the texture of the shingles on the roof. I imagine it would feel kind of rough and the overlapping um, shingles make it feel kind of bumpy. The next word is embroidery. Embroidery is a decoration made with a needle and thread or yarn on fabrics or other materials. Now I am going to grab a needle, which it's very, very thin, hard to see. I'm going to pretend to thread a blooming flower on this fabric. The next word is Barlow knife. A Barlow knife is a large pocket knife. Now I'm going to take my Barlow knife and pretend to cut a piece of rope. Now the last word we will go over in the vocabulary is kettle. Kettle is a type of pot used for boiling water. Now grab your kettle. It's time to make some tea. Now, as we read, I want you to think about this question. How is colonial life different from your life now? Oxcartman by Donald Hall, pictures by Barbara Cooney. In October, he backed his ox into his cart and he and his family filled it up with everything they made or grew all year long that was left over. He packed a bag of wool he sheared from the sheep in April. He packed a shawl his wife wove on a loom from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from sheep sheared in April. He packed five pairs of mittens his daughter knit from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from sheep sheared in April. He packed candles the family made. He packed linen made from flax they grew. He packed shingles he split himself. He packed birch brooms his son carved with a borrowed kitchen knife.
He packed potatoes they dug from their garden. But first, he counted out potatoes enough to eat all winter and potatoes for seed next spring. He packed a barrel of apples, honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbages, a wooden box of maple sugar from the maples they tapped in March. When they boiled and boiled and boiled the sap away, he packed a bag of goose feathers that his children collected from the barnyard geese. When his cart was full, he waved goodbye to his wife, his daughter, and his son, and he walked at his ox's head 10 days, over hills, through valleys, by streams, past farms, and villages. Until he came to Portsmouth and Portsmouth Market. He sold the bag of wool. He sold the shawl his wife made. He sold five pairs of mittens. He sold candles and shingles. He sold birch brooms. He sold potatoes. He sold apples. He sold honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbages. He sold maple sugar. He sold a bag of goose feathers. Then he sold the wooden box he carried the maple sugar in. Then he sold the barrel he carried the apples in. Then he sold the bag he carried the potatoes in. Then he sold his ox cart. Then he sold his ox and kissed him goodbye on his nose. Then he sold his ox's yoke and harness. With his pockets full of coins, he walked, with his pockets full of coins, he walked through Portsmouth Market. He bought an iron kettle to hang over the fire at home. And for his daughter, he bought an embroidery needle that came from a boat in the harbor that had sailed all the way from England. And for his son, he bought a barlow knife for carving birch brooms with. And for the whole family, he bought two pounds of wintergreen peppermint candies. Then he walked home with the needle and the knife and the wintergreen peppermint candies tucked into the kettle. And a stick over his shoulder stuck through the kettle's handle and coins still in his pockets. past farms and villages, over hills, through valleys, by streams, until he came to his farm. And his son, his daughter, and his wife were waiting for him. And his daughter took her needle and began stitching. And his son took his barlow knife and started whittling. And they cooked dinner in their new kettle. And afterward, everyone ate a wintergreen peppermint candy. And that night, the ox cart man sat in front of his fire, stitching new harness for the young ox in the barn. And he carved a new yoke, and he sawed planks for a new cart, and he split shingles all winter.
Now, we already learned that goods are items or objects with value that we can use, buy, or sell. Colonial families made and grew their own goods in their farm so they can survive. Turn and talk. What goods did the colonial family in this story make or grow in their farm? That is correct. The family made items such as linen for the home and to wear, brooms for sweeping the floor, and even an ox cart to transport objects to other places. Now, let's think of these objects for a moment. Do we have to make our own clothes today? Do we need to make our own brooms to clean at home? Do we need a cart to take objects somewhere? No, we do not need to do any of these things to survive. Now, I have another question for you. How can we get the goods that we need today? That is correct. Today, we do not have to make most of the items we need to survive. Also, we do not have to live on a farm to grow our own goods. We buy our clothes from clothing stores. We buy our food at supermarkets and cleaning objects such as brooms at convenience stores. In this story, the ox cart man traveled with his ox, pulling a cart filled with goods he was going to trade in town. I want you to turn and talk. How do we take objects from one place to another today? Yes, we have various forms of transportation, many ways to get from one place to another, such as vehicles, bicycles, and even public transit, like the train and the bus. Let's continue reading. While his wife made flax into linen all winter and his daughter embroidered linen all winter, and his son carved Indian brooms from birch all winter, and everybody made candles. And in March, they tapped the sugar maple trees and boiled the sap down. And in April, they sheared the sheep, spun yarn, and wove and knitted. And in May, they planted potatoes, turnips, and cabbages, while apple blossoms bloomed and fell, while bees woke up, starting to make new honey. And geese squawked in the barnyard, dropping feathers as soft as clouds. The ox cart man sold all the goods in the market and received coins in exchange. Turn and talk. What goods did the ox cart man buy with coins? Yes, he bought an iron kettle, an embroidery needle, a barlow knife, and peppermint candies. Those were used a lot during colonial times and were needed for survival. Today, we do not need these specific items for survival. I want you to turn and talk again. How is the ox cart man's life different from your life today? 
Yes, colonial life was a long time ago, and we do not live now like they did then. Today, we can go to stores to obtain the goods we need to survive. We do not have to live in a farm to harvest our own goods. So today we learned some really important information about goods needed to survive in colonial times and how it is different for us today. The ox cart man and his family had to make their own food at home. They lived on a farm and traveled to town by walking. Today, we can go to places to get what we need, and we have many ways of getting from one place to another, like by car or train. Colonial families grew goods from their farm so they can use it or exchange it in town. Today, we get most of the goods we need for survival in a store and we make the exchange with money. So for our homework today, I want you to think about this question. How was colonial life different from your life now? You are going to record yourself on the microphone answering this question. And that audio, you will submit it on Seesaw. And remember, in colonial times, families depended on a lot of their own work in their farm in order to survive. Meanwhile, today, we live in apartments or houses, and we can get most of what we need to survive in stores. That's it for today. Until next time.